85 million years ago. Dinosaurs dominate the landscape. What land there is. For most of the planet is covered by water. These vast oceans are a cauldron of violence, a world much more dangerous than the land above. This is the brutal world where an ultimate predator is born and bred. This mosasaur was the most dangerous creature in the most dangerous ocean ever. It's 45 feet long. It's the size of a Greyhound bus. Now, a monster is resurrected inside a laboratory. And its killing secrets revealed. This is a Mosasaur. And this is a Mega Beast. This is Mosasaur country. At least it was. Where I'm standing would have been the bottom of the Western Interior Sea about 85 million years ago. Mike Everhart is one of the world's leading experts on Mosasaurs. The horizon would have been ocean for as far as you could see. The, the seaway stretched for hundreds of miles from where we're standing. At this time, the climate is warmer, so there are no polar ice caps. Sea levels rise until well over 80% of the planet is covered with ocean. The center of North America was covered with water from Nevada to Missouri, from the Gulf of Mexico on up past the Arctic Circle. The floor of this ocean, known today as the Kansas Chalk, was created by billions and billions of nanofossils, the shells of tiny plankton that drifted down and were deposited on the seabed. What we're looking at here is literally hundreds of thousands of years of deposition on the sea bottom of the Western Interior Sea. What we see back here is roughly an inch per 700 years to build up that much chalk. So there's untold billions of these animals there. And entombed in this chalk are giant fossils of Mosasaur. In the late 1830s, the bones of the beast are first uncovered in North America. This is where the mystery of the Mosasaur begins because nobody can say just what this creature is. It is a question that first arises when a massive skull is found near the Mose River in Holland. The first guy who looked at it thought it was part of a fossil whale. It was also thought to be the jaws of a crocodile, uh, a giant lizard, and one person even suggested it was a dragon slain by a medieval knight. A French paleontologist described it as a mosasaur, meaning Mose River reptile. Eventually, the American bones are matched up with the earlier fossil find in Europe and correctly identified as a mosasaur. Over the next 80 years, as scientists begin the serious hunt for dinosaur fossils, a pattern emerges. In every corner of the globe, they find mosasaur bones. This points to one conclusion. No other predator has ever dominated the planet like the Mosasaur. This guy weighed eight tons. It could easily swallow a full-grown human male whole, just like a tater tot. Scientists investigating Mosasaurs realized that nothing on Earth could have stopped them. It took a cosmic catastrophe to end their reign. As scientists explore Mosasaur evolution, their investigation yields a startling revelation. The ocean's top predator came from the land. 
These sea monsters began their journey as tiny lizards at the mercy of giant dinosaurs. How they became colossal mosasaurs remains a mystery. Until 1989, when a fossil hunter named Van Turner finds a very unusual skeleton. Turner takes the fossil to Mike Polson, a paleontologist at Southern Methodist University. When Van came across the first pieces of Dallasaurus, he immediately recognized it as some sort of mosasaur. Named Dallasaurus after its discovery in Dallas, Texas, the bones were pieced together. Then, scientists connect the dots. Dallasaurus is an interim form, a missing link between mosasaurs and the tiny terrestrial lizards that are their ancestors. The lizards, dubbed Aegialosaurs, face a constant threat from the larger, fiercer dinosaurs. They flee to the ocean. Three million years later, they evolve into Dallasaurus. Their toes evolve into webbed feet, so they can no longer function on land. In the span of six million years, they grow from a small three-foot lizard into the giant 50-foot mosasaur. The mosasaur's development demonstrates that even in evolution, timing is everything. Warm temperatures and shallow seas create an abundant food chain in the ocean. This is a perfect environment for animals to take to the water. But these life-giving seas can quickly turn deadly, even for mosasaurs. The competition is everywhere. Everything in the oceans then would have looked very strange to us today. All the fish seem to have been armed with mouthfuls of teeth. It seemed like everything in that ocean was a predator and just built for killing things. Like Zephactinus, a bony fish that is armed with a mouth full of long, needle-like teeth. The plesiosaurs are marine reptiles and top predators for over 100 million years. They come in two lethal varieties. One deals death through speed and agility. The other is a behemoth, so mammoth, nothing dares challenge it. And of course, there are the sharks. These predators were around 100 million years before dinosaurs had ever roamed the Earth. This is a tooth from a large shark that lived during this time, during the age of Mo uh, mosasaurs swam in this ocean. It's from a shark called Cretoxorana mantelli, the Ginsu shark. And I called it that specifically because it sliced and diced. The Ginsu is a giant shark. Reaching a length of 25 feet, it dwarfs any modern great white. This shark was literally able to bite through bone. We know that because we find pieces of mosasaur that have literally been severed from the bodies, swallowed, partially digested, and then regurgitated again. To survive, mosasaur had to change its land-based behavior, tearing out a place for itself at the very top of the food chain. But what allowed this creature to evolve into such a relentless killer? It's all in the bite. You'd probably be in shock after a bite like this.
We humans got lucky. We managed to miss out on the Mosasaur. Ninety-five million years ago, it is just a small lizard forced to flee into the ocean. Within six million years, it grows into one of the most successful predators of all time. But what made the Mosasaur such a monster killer? Millions of years of evolution created a perfect formula for the perfect killer. This is how you make an apex predator. First and foremost, breathing. Like whales, mosasaurs can spend long hours submerged in the sea, but they still have to come up for air. And then there's food. Fish are nutritious, but they're fast and slippery. To catch them, mosasaurs must develop the skills of an efficient hunter. Another part of the formula, hearing. In the water, sound location becomes a prime method for hunting. Mosasaurs modify their terrestrial ear into a super amplification system that makes sounds 38 times louder. In his studies of the Mosasaur, paleontologist Dr. James Lamb has been able to reconstruct the creature's hearing mechanism. This little piece fits in this pit and moves back and forth. And then this piece fits here, and a small movement in this first piece creates a large movement in this one. So it's a system that's finely tuned for conducting sound through water. Even though sound can lead them to the prey, it's difficult to detect a target if it's in murky water. Here, Mosasaur would have the advantage by using the keen sense of smell inherited from its land-based ancestors. A Mosasaur like this would have had a tongue that would have functioned exactly like a monitor lizard's tongue. The reason why the tongue is forked is so that the animal can smell in two different directions at the same time. This is smelling in stereo. One more addition to our killing formula. Sonar. The last piece in the puzzle is this set of nerves that run down the side of the upper jaw and especially are concentrated here in the snout. And it's a system for detecting the pressure wave given off by the prey. Mosasaur uses this pressure wave sonar to hunt, much like modern killer whales use echolocation. All these adaptations mean Mosasaur has a good chance of locating dinner, but they still have to catch it. And chasing down fast, elusive prey requires jet-like speed. So how does an eight-ton, 50-foot monster propel itself? This alligator has another piece of our formula, a massive tail. Along with crocodiles, Gators have a long, flattened tail shape similar to mosasaurs. They use the whip-like action of their tails to move quickly through the water. One of the things you notice, first off when you look at a mosasaur, is fully half the length is the tail. Mosasaurs retain their terrestrial lizard shape, except for the tail which evolves from a round snake-like shape into a wide, flat paddle. If you look at the vertebra on the tail, they have expanded bony struts, top and bottom, for the swimming organ that helps them swim. Using modern gators and crocs as a comparison, scientists estimate a mosasaur can reach a top speed of 30 miles an hour. Its whip-like tail is good for quick acceleration, 
but not sustained high-speed chases. Fish are built to swim fast and far. Mosasaurs won't win a marathon, so they have to strike quickly. Which means this enormous beast has to somehow hide its 50-foot body and ambush its prey. Imagine that this animal is sitting on the bottom, takes a deep breath, it just waits there for something to swim by close enough that it can get that sustained burst of speed to go out and catch it. Speed and surprise are two critical elements, but mosasaurs also need agility. That's where the paddles come in. They propel themselves with the tail, they steer with the paddles. These paddles are short and strong, allowing this long lizard to corner on a dime. Like flaps on an airplane wing, the paddles create drag, which makes them turn. For mosasaurs to be successful underwater, there was one land-based trait they absolutely had to jettison, their sensitive inner ear. The inner ear controls a creature's sense of balance. For land-based predators, maintaining balance is critical. If they stumble, their prey escapes. But in water, animals move in every direction, like a gyroscope. An animal with a sensitive inner ear can quickly become dizzy and disoriented. Over the millennia, the mosasaur's inner ear begins to dial down the sensitivity, allowing them to quickly twist and spin with no sickening side effects. These evolutionary refinements created a mega beast. The mosasaur can locate, chase, and catch its prey. But catching is not enough. The mosasaur has to eat. And the way that it eats is something that almost defies imagination. It's a prehistoric creature so vicious it makes sharks seem cuddly. With jaws like steel, it's large enough to swallow a human in one bite. This underwater T-Rex is bred only to hunt and to kill. And across the oceans of planet Earth, this mega beast rules. But 95 million years ago, mosasaurs had some serious competition from a familiar denizen of the deep, the shark. Prehistoric sharks, like their modern cousins, are vicious and durable. Traveling vast distances, ripping apart any creature that gets in their way. Sharks had been around for over 250 million years when mosasaurs evolved onto the scene. At that time, the largest, fiercest shark in the water was the giant Ginsu shark. The Ginsu would have, of course, looked very much like a modern great white, a very big, heavy-bodied shark. At a length of 25 feet, the aptly named Ginsus are over 10 feet longer than a typical great white. With mosasaurs and ginsus hunting in the same waters, one thing is certain, there will be blood. There was quite a competitive relationship going on when the big sharks and the, the mosasaurs were running into each other frequently. And at, at least at first, the mosasaurs were, were losing a lot. Well, there's definite evidence that sharks attack mosasaurs. You can see right here that there are clear bite marks from the arc of the mouth of a shark that was attacking. These big sharks carved up a lot of mosasaurs. So we find shed teeth, we find bones that are severed during this time. While an adult mosasaur can hold its own against a Ginsu, there are other mosasaurs. Mosasaur couldn't do any of that. So what they've done is to basically make a toothed conveyor belt to help sort of track the prey down its throat. 
You can look at Mosasaur fossils, and you can look at modern analogs that have a skull that works in a broadly analogous way. But sometimes building a model tells you something you just can't find out any other way. Dr. Lamb works with real effects in North Hollywood, California to build a life-size Mosasaur skull, complete with a set of death-dealing jaws. The massive steel jaws are powered by pneumatics instead of muscles and ligaments. Never thought I'd see a steel Mosasaur skull, but this is very cool looking. We've got three pneumatics, We've got two operators to run it, and we've reduced it to three basic motions. One set of pneumatics opens and closes the jaws. One set moves it backwards and forwards. And the third set runs the pterygoids in the roof of the mouth. The pterygoids are the terminator teeth. No other ocean predator has them a second set of teeth running down the roof of the mouth. These are a truly fiendish adaptation. They actually work independently to move the prey backwards in the throat and also to hold it still, to pin it down as it opens its mouth for the next bite. Now we see how these jaws worked in deadly concert. The bite, the ratcheting jaw, the Terminator teeth. Test one. Find out what the Mosasaur's first bite would do to any creature unlucky enough to get on the wrong end of these teeth. Mosasaurs had a really big bite. So we've got a piece of foam that would be about the same size as an eight or nine foot long shark or maybe part of the neck of a long neck plesiosaur. We're gonna put it sideways in this Mosasaur model's mouth and just see exactly what would have happened. Well, that's gonna leave a mark, isn't it? That's a broken neck. I'm pretty convinced that this thing would have probably killed something with the first bite. First time it bit down and ratcheted back like that, the thing's neck is broken. Test two, measure the capacity of its bite. Very simply, when our metal Mosasaur chomps, how much ersatz meat goes into its mouth? We've got this piece of foam with four inch squares painted on it. We're gonna feed it to this Mosasaur and see how much with each bite this thing would have dragged its prey down its throat. In one bite, our Mosasaur easily consumes four feet of flesh. That means this Mosasaur could eat a 20-foot animal in five bites or an adult human in a single gulp. It's not just the size of the bite. Inside the mouth, the teeth are virtual meat hooks. Dr. Lamb demonstrates with a hunk of ballistics gel, which is similar in consistency to human flesh. If you put a piece of meat in the mouth, it can't move out because the tips of the teeth grab it like a fish hook. So we're just gonna see if we can put this up here on these teeth. You can't come out this way because you're caught on these teeth. The only way you can really go is further into the mouth, which is really not the direction you wanna be going. And let's just see what happens here. Well, I don't think there's any doubt that you wouldn't want to be a swimmer in a late Cretaceous ocean. You can actually see tooth marks where it just cut right through about 10 pounds of flesh like it was just butter. That would be nasty. The only good thing about this is that you'd probably be in shock after a bite like this. Maybe you wouldn't feel the rest of it. Final test how the jaws perform eating simulated live prey. The first fish is immediately trapped on the barb-like teeth. And the rest? Well, 
straight down the old Mosasaur hatch. In 20 seconds, our captive Mosasaur can eat 500 pounds of fish. Why? It doesn't bother to chew them. There's a rapidly vanishing cloud of red and a few scales, and that's all that's left of it. For dessert, they test an item that Mosasaur never had the opportunity to eat. sure what we learned by that, but that was, uh, was quite satisfying. It's abundantly clear why Mosasaur is the ultimate success story of evolution, growing from a three-foot lizard into an alpha predator. Although this mega beast drove all its enemies into extinction, fossil evidence suggests another enemy took their place. And this enemy is something the Mosasaur has never seen before. From its humble beginnings as a three-foot lizard, the Mosasaur evolved into the most dominant megabeast the world has ever seen. Nothing in the ocean can kill it, let alone live with it. But the threat may have come from another direction. What we're looking at here is what I would like to call a paleo crime scene. It's a very old cold case file. Scientists studying Mosasaur fossils find evidence of attacks on these giant reptiles. There's a healed bite mark here, this raised ridge. There's a second puncture wound here with this lip of reactive healed bone around it. There are two marks up here on the top of the skull, and it probably killed the, the animal fairly quickly. What animal is vicious enough to attack the deadliest creature in the sea? And we can measure the distance between those bites, and we can marry it up with the jaw of another larger mosasaur, and the teeth fit perfectly into those holes. It makes perfect sense. The only thing mosasaur had to fear may have been mosasaur itself. Experts think that mosasaurs engaged in snout wrestling or face biting to establish dominance. We see really analogous behavior in modern saltwater crocs. Almost always the males, and they're defending a breeding or feeding territory. A mosasaur battle unfolds like a bizarre undersea ballet. establishes dominance, the other gives up and swims away. This type of competition is common animal behavior. But scientists uncover something shocking in this particular set of fossils. Evidence that suggests not simple predation, but something close to murder. We've got the fossil evidence that shows that mosasaurs killed other mosasaurs, and they didn't eat them. I mean, it wasn't for food. By looking at the damage on the skull, Everhart believes that this wrestling match turned deadly. The fossil evidence shows the dominant mosasaur clamps down on his opponent's skull. And as the skull of the mosasaur rolled to the side, these teeth pulled out and left these big drag marks across the bone, very deep wounds. Not only is the skull crushed, but evidence suggests the killer then broke the victim's neck. We found the neck laying off like this at a 45 degree angle to the skull. 
indicating that it's probably broken right up here next to the brain case. Not even great white sharks or saltwater crocs deliberately kill their own kind. They killed, kind of like humans, they killed for other reasons than for food. And uh, mosasaurs were, were different in that regard. We don't see that in very many other animal groups. Still, scientists believe this gladiator-like behavior would not have caused the mosasaur to go extinct. In point of fact, they seem to thrive on violence. 70 million years ago, with no other competition in sight, mosasaurs continued to evolve, becoming even more diverse. There's well over 50 species of mosasaurs. They began moving from the ocean into fresh water, seeking prey in swamps, estuaries, and rivers. Nothing on Earth could have stopped these megabeasts. Nothing on Earth, that is. It took a six-mile-wide chunk of rock that slammed into the Earth 65 million years ago to end the reign of the Mosasaur. We're talking about something that released as much energy as every nuclear weapon on the planet, times 1,000, set off all at once. The magnitude of this blast causes a shockwave of earthquakes and volcanoes. Mega tsunamis race across the oceans. A cloud of superheated dust and molten rain fills the atmosphere, blocking out almost all of the sunlight. This devastates the food chain. 75% of the species on Earth are wiped out. With its food supply drastically reduced, the Mosasaur is doomed. This cataclysmic event paved the way for the development of mammals and eventually humans. But what if the comet had missed? If Mosasaurs had been allowed to thrive, how different would our world be? We wouldn't have any whales or dolphins, or porpoises, or seals, or sea lions. The oceans and all its fish would belong to the mosasaurs. Bring her down. Fishermen would find very little to catch, if indeed there were humans on the planet at all. These would be very ferocious, uh, very hungry, active marine animals that uh, you wouldn't want to share your ocean with. It's fascinating and frightening to contemplate what might have been had these mega beasts survived. The oceans of the world patrolled by these giant killing machines, 50 feet long with jaws the size of T-Rex, always hungry, always waiting, just offshore. <laughs>